where was your brother I had heard an interesting story can you share that story with us isa yeah so uh we met him lou shropshire uh just three years ago and so when we went into um his uh when we were going there samuel told us that he has six guns under his bed waiting for muslims uh, to come over and so um we went there and uh, we spoke to him about different topics but we didn't get to speak to him too much about Islam. It was indirect da'wah. And so it was time for prayer. And so he said, yeah, um, is it is time for prayer. We said, yes, we can pray it later. But he said, no, you can go ahead right now. I would like to take a video of it. So as we went inside to make wudu, we saw a poster and it said to kill a Muslim and to take him directly to hell, uh, you put um, uh, what's it called a bullet in pig grease. And so we were like, wow, <laughs> we're very surprised. Um, but then we made wudu, we started praying. And uh, when we pray, we say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And is, that, so, is, that, is that like a war cry? No, that, that's what people think. <laughs> Sadly, um, what does that mean? Uh, God is great, that's it. Okay. Um, is that kind of like a hallelujah? Yeah, it is. Yeah, It is. I mean, alhamdulillah. God is great. God is wonderful. Hallelujah. Yeah, no, hallelujah. They, they, you, you should you be saying happy right? saying no? it. Okay. <laughs> so you were saying like uh, yeah. it's equivalent to hallelujah. God is the greatest. Correct. And then what happened? And so um, his neighbor heard us. And so he said, Hey, Lou, I hear some Muslims uh, saying Allahu Akbar. Would you like me to come with my shotgun? And then uh, Lou Shropshire said, uh, not yet, I will let you know. <laughs> so there is still a possibility. And then uh, he told us to sleep over his house. I was like, maybe he didn't catch us the first time while praying. Now he wants to catch us while sleeping. And so <laughs> we slept, we woke up, alhamdulillah. We were about to leave, but he started us uh, st still asking us some questions. And then two questions he asked us, and the end he said, how can I come to Islam? How can I be a Muslim? And so a person that hated completely Islam wow. now wanted to learn how to become a Muslim. And so we told him the six pillars of faith. We told him, uh, Shahada, Ashadu an la ilaha Allah, I bear witness that there is no God except Allah, and Prophet Muhammad is a messenger. And so he said, I believe in Allah, and I believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he said he will learn more in the future. But the second thing that affected me, he said, you know, it's not my fault that I don't know about Islam. It's your fault that you never told me about Islam or any Muslim told me about Islam. He lived for more than 80 years and nobody told him about Islam. But Alhamdulillah, we reached out to him before his death, two years before his death. And uh, a couple of months ago, we went to his memorial and saw him uh, there. Now there are, can you imagine how many people are out there just like that? Correct. They have the wrong perception about Islam. Uh, much of it through the media and much of it sometimes through just fringe elements uh, not representing Islam correctly and then you have also sometimes deliberate attempts to divide us as human beings by certain corrupt people organizations whoever the case right. because the big industry yes. now making money fueling this division Islamophobia well, yeah, yes this hate of Islam because you'll always be fearful of the unknown uh, you'll be fearful of, right. the, of the unknown but now you're, this is your brother he gets the proper education. He just spends a little bit of time asking questions. Look how powerful yeah. that was that at the end. And then he saw you guys praying. Yes. Coincidentally, like Jesus yeah. prayed with your face on the yes. ground. That's how Jesus prayed. And practicing the same way of life that Jesus practiced. It's nothing different. Submitting your will because Islam means to submit your will to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Correct. And that's what you guys were doing to the point that he's like, how can I, yeah. what did he say? How, how can, can I be a Muslim? And that sign, yeah. he had a sign. Yes. So you imagine <laughs> the kind of yeah. distorted yeah. you know, ideas that a person yeah. had and the hatred yeah. that he had a sign. This is how you send them yeah. to uh, hell, put a yeah. bullet in the pigs. <laughs> Greece, Greece, yeah. It's, wow. Man, it's bad. But you know, it's not his fault. And I like it's to... Par it's partially our fault. So now he's pointing... Yes, right, and then point he to pointed... The camera yes, right now, yes. Uh, right? He pointed like this and it was very scary for us for because he said, you know, it's not my fault that I didn't know about Islam. It's your fault that you never told me about Islam or any Muslim never told him about Islam. So for the 80 years that he lived, no one told him about Islam. And like him, there's hundreds of millions of people dying every year not knowing anything about Islam. And so if we can reach out to them, many of them, like Brother Samuel, would come into Islam. Well, what did you think after this encounter with your brother now and all this, you know, uh, his reaction? Well, you know, you think of reality. Reality is, um, Islam is reality. God is reality. Alhamdulillah. And uh, the reality is, uh, he loves us. He cares for us. He has mercy upon us. Uh, the more I learned about Islam and the more I learned about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the more I understood 
God's grace and mercy. Arachman Elohim, God the most merciful, the God who distributes mercy to all who request uh, freely. Re- Alhamdulillah, it's a great experience. And now to be able to share that mercy with others and to be able to share that salvation with others who are seeking help. Mm-hmm. So you went from one point in our last.